Hello and welcome to the Film Pulse Podcast. This is episode number 482. My name is Adam Patterson. With me today, we've got Kevin Rakestraw. Hey, Kevin. Oh, well, hello. Uh, this week on the show, we'll be taking a look at The Wrath of Becky, which is out now on VOD platforms. We'll also be going over some of what we've been watching on the watch list and going over this week's new releases in theaters, VOD and Blu-ray. Thank you so much for joining us this week. If you could give us a review on iTunes, that'd be great. I apologize for any audio issues that you hear this week. I'm having like, I don't know, man. I'm having all kinds of audio issues oh, this boy. week. Oh, boy. Yeah. So uh, apologies for that. And hopefully by next week, I'll have everything sorted out. With that, uh, let's go ahead and, and get into the Wrath of Becky here. Two years after escaping a violent attack, a teenage girl must defend herself against a terrorist cell. This is directed by Matt Angel and Suzanne Coote. Uh, now, Kevin, I'm looking on your letterbox here. Uh-huh. Uh, and I'm not seeing the original Becky on here. Did you see? Did you watch the original Becky? What? what? It's not on there? No, that's because uh, I didn't watch it. <clears throat> yeah, that's, that's kind of what I thought. You know why? You know why? I watched uh, uh, The Wrath of Becky, right? And I was oh, like, so you, I, just, you started with number two. I think because this, no offense, but a lot of these movies are the same. I can just fill in the blanks, you know? But I thought, depending on how this one's go, uh, maybe I'll go back to the first one. But I feel like I got, I think I know what happens in the first one. I don't think I would have been surprised. Uh, no, you wouldn't have been surprised. In fact, the wrath of Becky plays out almost exactly like the first one. I mean, it is like very, very, very similar. Just more. But Everything it. It, like it's just it's the same, but more. I mean, I guess a lot of people when they talk about sequels, they this is kind of the definition of a sequel where it's pretty much more the same thing, but it's just bigger. It just goes way bigger than the original one. Now, I wasn't a huge fan of the, uh, the first Becky. Um, let me see if I have a, what I, what I gave it on Letterboxd because I'm pretty sure <laughs> I re- I gave it a two and a half on Letterboxd. Right. I rewatched it for, for uh, the sequel here because I, pretty much forgot most of the stuff in the original Becky. Like I remembered some of the kills and stuff. Um, but yeah, for the most part, sort of forgot, but, uh, yeah. So I revisited it. I'd still stick by my two and a half score on that one. And I could pretty much say the same thing about the wrath of Becky. Like there were, there were a lot of things I liked and there were a lot of things that I thought were just not very good and just kind of lame. Um, this is the type of movie that you don't really put a lot into. Like you don't go into a movie like wrath of Becky hoping or expecting anything that's going to blow you out of the water. What you have here is your pretty standard revenge thriller. And so I, I think that all you could sort of want going into wrath of Becky is a, a badass lead killing people in very violent ways. And that's what you get. You get, you definitely get that with wrath of Becky. You sure do. And I, I, I appreciate that this movie just takes a, a fairly simplistic approach. This is just a very simple movie. It doesn't try to be anything bigger. You know what I mean? Like it, just, it knows what it's doing. It's short and sweet. And I'm like you, that there's certain things that I enjoyed. Other some aspects of it. I thought were kind of lame. But all in all, I think it ticked most of the boxes that it set out to tick. You know, it's gory. It's ridiculous. Short, to the point. It's not overcomplicated. And it's in and out. And you're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So in the first, Becky, the, the big bad villain was a neo-Nazi played by Kevin James, of all people. <laughs> the king of queens and he had a giant giant swastika tattooed on the back of his head this one uh becky is not going after neo-nazis although it's pretty much neo-nazis she's going after a very thinly veiled um group that is it's the proud boys let's just be honest i don't know why they couldn't just have them be proud boys i think that would be really funny if they just straight up called them Proud Boys. 
Yeah, then, but then you would have to have some teeth. And I don't think this movie is prepared to have teeth. You know what I mean? Like, it's just... Yeah. It's just... Because even, like, the noblemen or whatever that they call it, even yeah, that... They, men, proud boys, they don't, get it? Yeah, they, they don't really even, like... They don't even really talk about their beliefs that much. No, They're just and... just kind of and... like... Women suck. That's it. Yeah, and, and the same thing. It's the same thing that happened in in the first Becky. It was like they. I guess the the directors. This is a di- different director uh, or directing duo from the the first one, I believe. But um, in the first one, I don't think that they felt the need to get into the politics of of neo Nazis and. Similarly, I don't think that they felt the need to really get into 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 deeply into um, what these noblemen really stood for, because I think most of the people that are that are watching the Wrath of Becky probably already know like what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, they the, so uh, the, the the leader of the noblemen or the, the this chapter of the noblemen that Becky's going after uh is played by sean sean william scott so that's kind of another funny casting choice there and i think he did actually a pretty good job as being a villain yeah and um you so the the premise the setup here is is basically becky has an altercation with these these noblemen uh, she she has someone close to her killed. Her dog gets kidnapped, and she's like, "You know what? I'm gonna kill them all." And it turns out that she uncovers uh, a plot to to stage an insurrection. And they it seemed like they were also gonna try to kill a congresswoman who was I I'm fairly certain was modeled after Alexandria Ocasio Cortez had to be there's no way that that was not yeah aoc um so uh, and and that's pretty much it she just kills him she kills him the, mm-hmm. in in the first one she was you know a lot younger and there were some really interesting kills in the first one as far as like the traps that she would set up and stuff like that this one just takes it to a whole new level because she ends up getting access to basically a full militia arsenal and yes. is able to do pretty much whatever she wants. Um, and I got to say, like the 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 violence, the gore it was all pretty, pretty well done. I would say I liked the way it, it was shot in a, a darkly comedic way. And I thought that 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 kind of worked. I thought that they straddled the line between comedy and, and horror pretty well. Yeah. Leaning, it, leaning more heavily I, into the comedy side. Yeah. Cause the way I looked at it more, so it, it seems like it was shot more with that in mind. It doesn't seem like this movie's taking itself seriously at all, no, no, which was very much appreciated because early on there's some stuff happening that I'm like, Oh man, don't straddle that line a little bit more let's not let's not let's not go too far with it yeah no they they and i mean by the end you're just like okay we they they it's we're all fully aware that they're not taking anything too seriously in this uh i loved i loved the scene when the guy fell into the pit i thought that was shot really well they they showed him falling into the pit like an idiot and then what what happened to him afterwards i thought was great um and the you know like i i was kind i was into the movie overall but i i've kind of felt the same way that i felt about the first becky and maybe i like this one a little bit more just because of how over the top it was and the fact that it really leaned into the like kind of comedic aspects of it whereas the first one is a little bit more serious um but the end like that final scene is really what made me uh kind of kind of have a grin on my face um because they set it up for another a third one so th- it seems like this is going to be a trilogy um and where they ended things i i thought was really funny and just kind of kind of perfect and i'm really excited to see where things go from here with uh 
you know, with regards to like the coordinates and the list that she has and all of that stuff. Yeah. And by, I mean, by the way, the, the thing that she had there, the key, that's from the first movie. Nah, they told me. I knew it. Oh, they, yeah, okay. yeah, because they tell you in the movie. That's why I was like, oh, they kind of caught me up. So they do the little flashbacks here and there. I'm like, yeah. I couldn't remember if they explicitly said that, but I, I yeah, it was just like a flashback where she gets it. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I got the like the main takeaway. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, she got this key. But we don't and know what she, it is still. We still don't know what it is, but now she's feds. So I like how that they. A little bit of a, that was a little bit of a spoiler, but. Well, I didn't. You don't know what department. <laughs> True. I guess. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, yeah, they, I, I like. I thought the ending was really cool. I thought it was fun. Yeah, this is. I, you know, I. It is what it is. I didn't hate it. There was some stuff that I thought was lame. I. I don't like. Um, essentially, any movie that does this really is where like something happens and then it like freeze frames. It's like, no, nah, I actually didn't get to do that. I That's what I wanted that to too. do. Like, that shit is so annoying. Because first of all, I that scene, I was like, well, that's, that scene's ridiculous in and of itself. Because there's a scene like that in the first one, too. And I was like, yeah, they kind of retread an old territory there. And then, and plus, like, the guy didn't just get up and run away. Like, he just laid there like an idiot. He wasn't injured or anything. You know, he could have got up and ran away. But then when she's like, oh, uh, that's not how it happened. I'm like, why would you... <laughs> Why? Why would you put that? They, they, she does it one time in the whole movie. But she it does it twice. So, it was, oh, does she? Oh, she yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. It, it's so unnecessary. Like, it's literally just filler. There's no point to it at all. In fact, just the, 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 the narration portion of it altogether yeah. probably could have just been removed and it wouldn't have changed anything. No. It probably would have benefited a little bit. Yeah. I, I think that there's definitely a lot of criticisms and, and quibbles you can have with this movie. But at the end of the day, I think it's just pretty fun. I think Lulu Wilson does a good job in this role. I just I like in general, just the, just the fact that this sequel exists in general, I think is just kind of fun. It's not something that I expected. Yeah. And the fact that it seems like there's going to be more than just the two also is, is kind of interesting. Yeah, it's uh, it's honestly interesting that this is going to become a franchise. And I I think I'm more inclined to see what the casting choices will be. I mean, they got to pick film. a yeah, they got to pick a comedian that like they're they're locked in it now. Like they're going to have to pick someone who you would not expect to be playing like I a think, neo-Nazi or whoever. Well, I was going to say not expecting, but I was going to say Tim Allen should be the next one. <laughs> I think that would be a good pick. That would be expected though. Like Tim <laughs> Allen would actually fit. <laughs> That's what we, I was we, like. I was, I was like, oh, Tim Allen's perfect. And then you said not expecting. And I was like, oh yeah, that kind of puts it. A... Yeah. They need, they need somebody. They need somebody who's like really, likable and kind i would say i would say bo burnham but like he he was in that uh you you uh, said likable well yeah i guess like like pete davidson (laughs) (laughs) yeah i guess that's uh that's up for debate (laughs) um davidson in the third one put adam sandler in it that (laughs) <laughs> that would be that would be a crazy twist. But it's also gonna be someone that's like hasn't been around as much. You know what I mean? Because it was for me, like seeing this John William Scott in there, I was like, oh yeah, that guy. Like he like he owned like a whole decade. He fucking yeah. owned an entire decade. Yeah. Like two thousand to twenty ten, he was it was that was Sean William Scott territory. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, he he did kind of fall off, unfortunately. I don't know why. I I, I like him. I think he's a good actor. They could they could have Josh Hartnett be. Uh, oh, the there villain. you go. They yep. could have him be the villain in the new one. I would say Nick Stahl, but I think Nick Stahl's got problems. How about uh, Breckenmeyer? 
Oh, Breckenmeyer. That would be perfect. I or feel DJ like I Qualls. Him. Yeah, DJ Qualls would be good too. Bas- basically, anyone from a road trip movie. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Tom Green. <laughs> oh my God, I like I like uh, this fantasy casting for Becky Three. I think it's or Seth Green. We do Seth Green too. Oh, Seth Green. Yeah, what's yeah. Seth Green up to? Does he do stuff? I think he's still doing Robot Chicken. I think. It's I mean, still like, on. like actual, like work. I think that. I think that's. Well, he does Family Guy too. Huh. I'm thinking yeah, of like he's... a like a show, like a no. show or a movie. That he no, be th- proud to be I like, think, hey, I do this. No, I think Family Guy and Robot Chicken probably keep him pretty busy. Probably working. does. I think he <laughs> probably does like a lot of conventions and stuff too. Seems seems like one of those types of things. No, oh, he was the voice of Howard the Duck in the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three movie. Watch oh, out! There you go. There He's you go. getting that money. Get that Disney dough. Oh yeah. All right, so that's the wrath of Becky. Let's go ahead and give it a score. I am I'm at like a six on this one. Yeah, I'm like I'd say like a five and a half, six. There you have it. That is on VOD platforms right now. If you're looking for a good fun revenge thriller that involves a lot of proud boys getting killed in really gruesome ways by a young girl. Check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about some of what we've been watching. I think that it is my turn this week. I've been, I'm not going to go through them all, but if you check my list on Letterboxd, you'll see that yeah. I'm, I'm, go, I'm going through the uh, the video nasty list. I'm, I'm going to try to watch all of them that I haven't already seen. So I've already seen a ton of movies on the video nasty list. And I just decided randomly that, you know what? I'm just going to try to watch the rest of them. So I'm not going to talk about all the movies that I see on it because a lot of them are just not really worth talking about because so far, a lot of them have been very average to below average. Nothing like absolute God awful yet, but um, I'm, I'm, I'll start off with a a non-video nasty one. This is uh, If Footmen Footmen Tire You, What Will Horses Do? Now, this is directed by Ron Ormond. We talked about this, I think it was last week, because there's that box set that came out. Mm -hmm. They remastered a whole bunch of this guy's movies. I never heard of him before, um, and I never saw any of his movies before. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to... I'm just going to dive into one of these. This one had a funny title, so I decided to watch it. I literally went into it completely cold. I had no idea what the synopsis was. I didn't know anything about it. I just knew the title. That's it. And Mm -hmm. turns out this is like, it's a propaganda film, which I didn't know at all. But it is essentially a kind of like a scared straight type movie that that tries to warn people against communism Mm. and i mean it's like very overt like there's no there's no subtext there's no subtlety in this uh it's just supposedly true stories about communists doing awful things to people and um it it's like a a series of reenactments of these awful things and, and what could happen if we let America fall into the hands of the communists and, and get away from the scripture, get, get away Mm. from the word of God. Yeah. So like, it's like one part anti-communism and then one part like American Christian values. Um, it's like narrated by some, uh, like, some preacher or something and Estes Perkle. Estes Perkle. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Estes W. Perkle. It's ridiculous. It is uh it is ridiculous. Um it's fascinating. I was thoroughly entertained by it. The things that this guy says and he presents as fact are insane. 
Um, but the weird thing is, you know, this came out in 1971. I feel like we're getting the same kind of shit happen today, but like just different, like a different medium, you know, like it's just on Facebook and, and these like social, different social media platforms, Twitter and all of that, where people are kind of doing the same shit, but just in a different way. Mm. So yeah, it was kind of fascinating. You do get to see, uh, a communist take little pieces of bamboo and stab them into a kid's ears. Wow. Um, yeah, because that's apparently what the communists do to children is they stab oh, them dude, that's... in the, <laughs> they stab them in the ears with bamboo and they, and then, and, and uh, make the kid vomit like that. Oh, yeah. You know, that's, that's like, that. um, it's like the classic move. The, the, that's a special move from the communists. You see it the all the blood, time. The blood in this movie looked maybe like the fakest blood i've ever seen it was nice ridiculous but the fact that it existed at all was kind of kind of wild anyway that is if footmen tire you what will horses do what will they what will horses do i guess i don't know I guess kill you did the footmen tire you uh no i think so I'll i think you'll no. be okay with horses then yeah i think so you're ready for them. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I watched a a newish western. That's Old Henry with Tim Blake Nelson, which still is wild to me that he directed the newest Billy Woods video. But here he is playing an old western gunslinger. Disguised as a farmer. He has a past life that he's trying to keep secret. Mm. Of course, this guy... I can't bury the past. You can't. You can't do it. You can try your best. Jesus Christ. He's been doing it for a long time. He got a plot of land, got married, had a kid. He was doing so good. Everything was just fucking going great for him, right? <clears throat> and the next thing you know, horse pops up out of nowhere with blood on it. And he's like, ah, oh, shit. Finds the guy that was shot. And this guy has a statue of cash, a boatload of cash. So he decides that, oh, he's taking him back to the farm get him healed up if he can he'll get him healed up and he'll get him out of here right good thing to do i guess and uh but the thing is Stephen dwarf and his buddies are hot on this guy's trail because that's his money that's his statue of cash so Stephen dwarf is your is your villain in this and he's fucking great so is tim blake nelson both of them do a fantastic job and i enjoyed it I would definitely recommend it. Takes there's a twist. There's a twist that happens where Tim Blake Nelson's revealed to be somebody and you're just like, oh shit. And then uh you get some some good action in there. And what more could you want, really? Sounds like a classic western to me. That's it's got all the western things you want, I think. Nice. Great. That's old Henry. I was like slightly interested in that when it came out. I was like, I don't know, I I really got to be in the mood really got to be in the mood for a western and i gotta say like i was mildly interested in it but i was never in the mood right so we finally watched it yeah, for the, the sake of it and i was like ah, this is actually a pretty damn good movie nice again that's old henry i saw watermelon man from 1970 yeah this is directed this is directed by melvin van peebles um this movie's incredible absolutely incredible it's funny it is i would say boundary pushing for the time this is a it's basically like it's sort of like a body swap movie there's no swapping really basically you have this character his name's jeff gerber and he's an insurance salesman and he's like mildly i would i would say like mild to medium racist and he wakes up one day and he's black. He just wakes up. He's a white guy, wakes up the next day and, and he's a black guy. And the movie's just about him adjusting to life as a black man. And from what I understand, like this was a, this was a major studio film. And from what I understand, their original plan was to have a, a white guy be in blackface 
And when Melvin Van Peebles got hired as the director, he was just like, no, 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 no. We're going to hire a black guy and put him in whiteface. So you have uh, Godfrey Cambridge in here as someone who he does whiteface for, you know, I don't know, a third of the movie before he he turns into a black man. It's it's definitely satirical. I think that it's um, it's funny, but like also, you know, as a white person watching it, it's a very uncomfortable type of laughter because you're you're laughing at the racism, basically, like you're laughing at the 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 situation and the fact that like when this guy wakes up and he's black like his whole life gets ruined because of that and it's so yeah it's um absolutely worth a look i think melvin van peoples is such a good director like he he does like all of these little like he puts up like random title cards and stuff and it's just such a goofy movie but it has a very serious message and he, from what i understand he insisted that the the entire crew be comprised of black people and um the the way that the movie ends is also quite surprising and fitting so i highly recommend watermelon man it is uh it is well worth a look. Watch the list and kind of check yeah, that man. out. Melvin Melvin Van Peebles. Hell yeah. Uh I rewatched the thing. John Carpenters? John Carpenters. The thing. I didn't know that there's like a, a newish the original one. Oh, there is well, there's yeah, the there original a... like a sequel? I can't remember if it was a sequel or a reboot. The newer one you're talking about. Yeah. It was a sequel. It it was a sequel, but it was also sort of a reboot to the old twofer yeah it was bad. rebooting and sequeling it at the same time yeah it was bad double pack yeah it looked terrible this is just a fucking terrible idea why would you do that jesus all all of the creature effects were cg in the new one and yeah it's just, it just sad that's, that's and see that's the that's the beauty of the thing that's where all the charm lies in the thing i mean obviously pacing's great acting's great but the fucking the effects in this movie are just batshit insane. To this day, I think that they're still the best creature effects in any movie. Like they hold up so tremendously well to this day. They're just, they're fucking nuts. And I just miss that in movies in terms of spending so much time, effort and resources and getting the, the creature effects to look absolutely fantastic because they commit to it. Like the camera does not, shy away from showing you everything all the transitions you know this the skin stretching and ripping and tearing like all that mm -hmm. nasty shit the camera's just there like it's you have the to do it too. right like they don't they don't try to hide things in darkness either they no they yeah it's it's so good just oh man i fucking love this movie so much yeah i mean it, the thing remains one of my favorite one of my favorites of all time like i just it's one that you can just rewatch over and over again. It never gets old for me. I just pretty much every. It's funny because I th I didn't I didn't. It wasn't not that long ago that I watched this, and like even this time around, like it comes on, and the nor you know the Norwegians are shooting the dog, which I had just completely had forgotten that that's how the movie opens, and I'm just like, yeah, what the fuck is? Why is there Norwegians in this movie? I don't remember any of this shit. <laughs> It's basically the setup for the whole movie. <laughs> exactly. It's like, I don't it, it, this. It, it is like way different too. Like, I mean, they're like the Norwegians are just, they're not part of the main crew. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's a very short intro thing too. So I think it's something that's easy to forget. But yeah, yeah. if you haven't seen the thing, I mean, just John Carpenter general, just watch John Carpenter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, in in this month, Saved by the '90s, we talk about Escape from LA, and uh, that was that was a fun one to revisit, man. Because I haven't seen that in years. Oh man, that one's pretty wild. Oh, that's your Kurt Russell right there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. your boy. It is my boy. Cool. Uh, so that's the thing. Definitely check that out. I saw Extraction Two. This is directed by Sam Hargrave. Um, 
I did not really like Extraction 1. I was not impressed by it, except for that one scene that everybody talks about, the, the, the single-take action scene with the car. That's really only the only thing I even remember about the first Extraction, and the fact that he died at the end. And I remember saying, like, the fact that, they, that he died at the end, and that's, like, how they ended the movie, I thought was kind of surprising and, and refreshing to see that well turns out he didn't die uh, uh he's 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 back for extraction two chris hemsworth he's back and i gotta say um this very much like wrath of becky does the exact same thing where it is it's a sequel and it's basically the same thing just taken to 11 everything is bigger in this one you got a 40 minute no cut action scene that's absolutely insane like the way that it is shot so it starts with this like a prison breakout scene and it's very tense you know because chris hemsworth and his his crew they're like sneaking through this prison in georgia um the country and they're like you know hot sneaking past guards and stuff and like the tension starts to build and then finally they you know they get the the people that they want to extract out of there and like they get caught of course it goes down and it causes this huge prison riot and you just have this insanely choreographed scene involving all of these prisoners fighting i mean it's just like complete chaos not a single cut i mean obviously masked cuts quite a few of them but like it, it doesn't matter it keeps the the momentum is kept up and like that transitions to a car chase transitions to uh, a, a shootout on a train you got helicopters chain guns like gatling guns people flying getting blown up molotov cocktails it's insane uh it is so much fun and the movie in general i mean even past Obviously, that is the highlight. That that giant scene is the highlight, and it happens pretty early on, like very early on. So it does lose momentum after that because nothing reaches those same heights. However, yeah. the 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 action sequences that take place afterwards are very satisfying. They're just not on the same level. So I will say, Extraction Two is a lot of fun i mean it's it's very well shot very well choreographed the action is intense it's a lot more violent than the first one the first one was pretty violent but this one kind of takes takes that up a notch too um and yeah i i definitely recommend this one it's on netflix so if you still have netflix you can check check it out there uh and and it seems like that this is probably going to get a third one too. I I would imagine. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Check it out. Extraction two. the story wise, plot wise, you're, you, I mean, it is super basic, like not even worth talking about. Somebody yeah. needs to be rescued. That's all you need to know. Like yeah. it, it, it they, they try, you know, they, they try to add to the story and they, they incorporate this whole like thing where, like there's one of the kids that he saves is like torn between going with his uncle, who's like one of the kind of terrorist guys, and but none of that works. It doesn't matter. It's all inconsequential anyway. You you just want to watch this for the action, plain and simple. Yeah. Does he die at the end of this one? <laughs> no. Uh -huh. you know, I, I thought he was going to. I thought I was like, oh man, they're gonna kill him again, because it it seemed like it was gonna go that way for a second but no ah uh, that would be a fun thing if he dies with at the end of it yeah that will ever all of them just dies at the end of all of them. <laughs> i would like that. i think that would be kind of fun and then every movie starts with him being like psych i'm back i'm trying to extract this other person <laughs> oh no extraction time all right let's let's take a look at what we have in theaters this week the big one's asteroid city you excited for asteroid city a little bit. Yeah, I'm little a little excited. bit excited for it, too. I love me some Wes Anderson, so... Yeah, very excited for that. Uh, I hope that it's playing in my area, because I do plan on seeing it in the theater. Ooh, good luck. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much it for 
theaters, as far as I can tell here. There's some small things, but uh, VOD this week. What is today? The 19th? Uh, let's see. Yes, sir. Starting with the 20th, we have Surrounded. We got Coyote. We got Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. And then on the 23rd, we have I'll Show You Mine. Uh, we've got Heightened. We got Heroes. Oh, boy. That is a, t- that is a rough title. We got Maximum Truth. Ooh. And looks looks like that's about it. On Netflix, we got anything on Netflix? It looks like on the 19th, well, uh, we have Take Care of Maya. Uh, and then on the 23rd, we have Through My Window Across the Sea. <clears throat> and then we also have I Number Number Josie Gold. Mm. <laughs> that is the most ridiculous title, guys. Come on. I Number Number Josie Gold. Like, I mean, the movie might be cool. I don't know. But the the title there. Give me a break. <laughs> Blu-ray this week. We got Avatar, The Way of the Water. Oh, boy. Or as, like, as we like to say, Way of the Water. Oh, oh Way of the Water. <laughs> um, Got the... Looks, looks like some Tom Cruise stuff coming out here vanilla skies coming out in 4k the firms coming out in 4k let's see we got the covenant that's the guy richie won from earlier this year that's actually pretty good i'd, I'd give that a light recommend we got the game trilogy coming out on arrow most dangerous game the killing game and the execution game <laughs> we got ronin coming out in 4k uh, let's see what else. Polite Society from earlier this year. I thought that one was okay. Zombie Ass Toilet of the Dead. Finally oh. coming out on Blu-ray, man. I've been waiting, waiting for that one. Fucking hell. <laughs> oh Incredible. my god. I am T-Rex from last year. Eh, looks like that's pretty much it. What about Criterions? Oh, we got two. Got a two for. We got The Servant from 1963 getting a 4K restoration. And then we have Medicine for Melancholy, the Barry Jenkins, 2008. Nice. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you so much for listening to this your questions and topics to podcast at filmpulse.net. You can follow us on Twitter at filmpulse.net and at filmpulsekevin. And if you have a minute, consider giving us a review on iTunes. That'd be great. For Kevin Rakestraw, my name's Adam Patterson. We'll see you next week.